Hey, good morning, everybody. It's Al, Alan Thomas and my wife Angie, and you're wondering what the heck are these guys doing in these kids' clothes? They're wearing their grown-ups' clothes, but we want to show you the impact of showing up. And so this is not an X-rated video, I promise, but this is what we had on three years ago when we decided to show up. So a little bit big, um, and this is what happened because we showed up. So the other day, I. I'd never tried this, this suit on, but literally the day before everything changed for me, uh, Angie and I had on these clothes. So I'm gonna, let me just get this stuff off. This is not easy. There we go, something came out there. I don't know what that was. But uh, this, you can tell I'm not a professional videographer. But we've got my wife Angie with me today. I do Rethink Dining for Men and you know, people say, why don't you do something stupid like that? I said, well, I don't know. I just like doing stupid stuff sometimes for one thing. But but the, this video really is about showing up. And, you know, Woody Allen, I, I had to look this up, but Woody Allen said, and this is not a very good video. Come close, baby. Okay. okay. So Woody Allen said, and I don't know when he said it, but he said 80% of life is showing up. And I think it, it's really actually more than that. I think he underestimated you know, when, when I look back at the day that I wore that suit, um, I put that suit on, Angie had that dress on. You know, I was 304 pounds literally about 10 days before that. And when I, um, when I stepped on the scale and saw that, I just didn't, it didn't impact me, you know, ever before like it did that day. And I was thinking, oh my God, I've let myself, I'm 55 years old. I've got a beautiful wife, obviously, and I've got four kids, youngest is 15, and I've let myself get morbidly obese. How the heck do I get out of this mess? And I really didn't know. And it was really another one of those times where, you know, just, it could have easily been just one more failed attempt at a diet. I, I dieted over and over and over and over again. Angie Cook, the joke was she cooked 10,000 chicken breasts over 35, 40 years. We'd been married 31 years at that point, and, and it was just this constant up and down, mainly up trajectory that I had. And when I decided that really showing up for my family was, was the number one thing and showing up for myself and showing up for my, you know, for Angie and really more than that, it, that's when everything changed. And I, know, I don't know if this makes sense to you guys, but I know what you're if you're struggling with obesity like I did, you know, I lost 129 pounds in, in 260 days. But what was really pretty incredible is I didn't think Angie needed to lose weight that much. And she lost, she turned around and lost 63 pounds in 190 days. We, you know, through that journey, I learned really that it was never just about the diet. I mean, did I have to change what I was eating? Did I have to change how I move my body, exercise? Of course you do. I mean, that's, you know, anybody that tells you you don't have to, tell them to prove it. But, but of course, I had to change those things. But was it ever the diet that I was on that made all the difference? No, it, it wasn't. But here's what's interesting. I started losing weight, then she started losing weight. Okay, so so speed of the pack, speed of the leader. Now clearly Angie's in charge, everybody knows that, but but she was looking for me to step up. She was looking for me to step up and, and show that I could do it. And when I stood on that scales at 304 pounds in March of 2017, it was really about, was I gonna show up in my life for my family? Was I gonna show up for my daughter who pushed the start button? She's 18 now, getting ready to go to University of Florida. You know, was I going to show up in my 65th year? Because I was in the life insurance business. At age 55, I knew that I had never met a man that was 65 years old that had more than 100 pounds of weight to lose. So was I going to show up at my, in my 65th year? Was I going to show up in my 70th year, 80th year? You know, I'm 58 right now. And when I see pe the men that I talk to every single day, sometimes it, it doesn't sink in that they may not get to show up. And, and so showing up, I think, is almost 100%. If you're not willing to show up, nothing else really matters. And, and I don't say this to shame anybody, because I know the struggles. I know what it's like getting on, a, on an airplane and, and wear and a suit like I just had on fitting. And the person that I'm getting ready to sit beside saying to themselves, oh my God, I pray he doesn't sit beside me, because I really needed two seat belts and I really needed both seats. 
And so it was an uncomfortable flight. I know the embarrassment of stepping into a clothing store and asking for the section of clothes where they where there's like three pair of pants that are humongous. And you know, I was in a size 40, 48, trying to be a 46, which is absolutely dumb. You know, 46 is already fat, so who cares? I was, you know, I was constantly in shame. My kids were right leaving me notes. My, you know, my daughter, you know, had friends making fun of me. So it, get, it affected her, all these impacts that I had because I wasn't willing to show up. And people say, well, I can't stick to a diet. Well, maybe you can, maybe you can't. You know, everybody, but, but I know that I was never able to stick to one. Then all of a sudden, I was. Then all of a sudden, I, the weight started coming off. Then all of a sudden, the purpose that I was created for started to appear. So all of these different things that impacted me that I thought were all about me started to be all about everybody else. And 129 pounds later, and this morning I weighed in, I weighed 175, which was the, which was the target weight. Has it been a up, straight up and down, straight downward journey and staying there? No, of course not. But, but I did learn some things along the way and Angie learned some things along the way and she, you know, she stayed fit, she stayed thin. And I'm just talking away, you wanna say anything? Mm-hmm. No, he, just that it was hard when he did what he did originally because I loved going along with Alan after we'd have a meal and then later, oh, let's go out to wherever and get a treat or, or here at home. It was so easy just to say yes when I could have easily have already said no and not been 63 pounds up either but um, it was a it was a day that did change our family because while we lost pounds some of our um, older children made um, it ripple down to them and they took chances with business or in other areas of their life that they may not would have if they had not seen their dad step up as he did um, and be the leader and um, of course they were always worried about his health and um, and us losing him at an early age. because And I was, but I could only do so much by trying to cook healthy and us doing what I thought was best. But there again, I was easily led astray also. But when we got married on March 1st, 1986, it was for better, for worse, and for all of those many vows that we took. But we also hoped and dreamed of growing old together and no, no bite of ice cream or any food was, is worth not being 90 or 100 and still traveling and living life with this guy here. So um, there's nothing that tastes as good as, as just having our family and our relationship. So nothing is worth a, a morsel of food if you might lose your family so, or they might lose you. And this may sound dramatic to people, but it's not. I mean, when I talk to men, I, you know, I have a program called Rethink Dieting for Men. Angie's Angie started to work with ladies using the same concepts where we team coach ladies as well. But, you know, my focus has been on men because men do face this, this battle of wanting to be, wanting to be good enough, you know, wanting to be good enough. I think it's, I think it's really the challenge of the ages. You know, we want to be good enough. And, and I would say to you right now that the, the day I made the decision where there was no turning back, where I was going, going to get my weight off, where there was no doubt that the weight was coming off, I was going to 175 pounds, one way or the other. When that day happened, I got free. And this, was, this is really about freedom. It's not about having a 32-inch waist and six-pack abs. I mean, that's nice. I mean, putting on these slacks that, that fit, and, and, you know, and I think they're 33s maybe. I don't, I don't know. It doesn't matter. It, it's not about that size. It's not about a beauty contest for men. It's about you know, having, the, having the, the courage to step into who you were always meant to be and to be able to, to do those things that you'd always dreamed about doing. And it's not because your knees hurt and you got type two diabetes and you're, you're gonna have you know, complications and you got heart problems, all that stuff matters. You've gotta be alive. But if you're not alive when you are alive, if you're not alive and living your life, the purpose that you were created for, the, the, the things that you were supposed to do, the things you'd always dreamed about doing, if you're not around for that, and then even if you are around, if you're lugging around 200 pounds or 100 pounds or 50 pounds of excess weight that's holding you back from living that life that you were supposed to live, then really it's, it's a hard life. And, and I know when I, when I have men that, that come alive, when I, you know, when I get text messages from men that are, that are reaching goals, you know, they, they get frustrated when, when they hit a wall. We all hit those walls. They get fresh, but they're moving forward, and they're and they're going to this destination that they've never, that they haven't been to maybe since they were 20. A weight that they dreamed of, 
and all of a sudden their business gets better. All of a sudden their relationships start to change. All of a sudden, you know, they get courage that they didn't have before because of these things called pounds. And so, you know, my passion is for you guys to live a life fully alive. And, and when I see that that's possible and I see a weight loss industry that's got $72 billion being poured into it every single year and growing and the, the waistlines of America, last time I looked, it was 39% were obese. Now it's 42% obese and it's projected to go to 50% obese in the next nine to 10 years. And people think it's just the diet. If it was just the diet, you would already be thin. Because I could have written 14 books on diets. I'm not, a, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a nutritionist. I'm not a dietitian. I'm not a physical fitness expert. But I'm just a guy that failed miserably. As you saw, the suit, if that suit fit me that I put on at the beginning of this video. That suit fit, and I put it on for impact because I've never put that, I've never put that whole outfit on. This is the first time I've done that since March the 10th, 2017. I, but I saved that suit because I knew there was a reason. So if that doesn't get your attention, if you're if you're not if you're over if you're obese and you, and you know that your weight is holding you back, if that doesn't get your attention, I you know I, I understand because I was in that place before too. But but if it but if you're if you're so sick and tired of being sick and tired of being fat, of waking up at 3 a.m. in the morning wondering if you're going to be alive, wondering why you can do all these other things. You know, I was successful in sales. I was success I had a great family, beautiful wife, you know, m magnificent kids, but I couldn't tackle this thing called obesity. It was kicking my butt every single day, and I woke up in the middle of the night, and it was what kept me awake night after night after night. And, and but, then when I, but then when I figured it out, and I figured out, and what I did may not work for everybody, but I can tell you the men that, that, that get into my program, it, the results are nothing short of breathtaking. I know I, I've, seen, I've seen guys lose, you know, lose weight that told me they never could. I've seen guys stick to, stick to you know, losing weight that said, I can't do it. I've seen people you know, have all these aha moments in their life, and that's what I live for now. So, so if, you're a, if you're a man that, that really knows that you know, it, what's, what you've tried in the past just hasn't worked, you know, maybe it's time that you, you rethought this whole dieting process. You know, that, that's why I named my program Rethink Dieting. And, and it really is. It, is it the diet? Hey, you gotta change your diet. Is it your exercise? Hey, you gotta change how you move. No doubt. But if that were your own, if that were the answer, again, I say you'd already have a 32 inch waist. So reach out to me, go to transformmyfuture.com forward slash apply. And we can have an honest conversation about, uh, about this weight loss process. You know, Angie is, is building her, her, um, her, her business right now. If you know a lady that's struggling with it, you can go, go through the same link. Angie and I are working, uh, you know, working together with women right now that, that, that have struggled with obesity. And so if you want to be one of those ladies that steps into the beauty that you know that you were always capable of being or a man that knows that his destiny really, really is being shortcut by his obesity, then go to RethinkDieting.com, watch a free masterclass that I created, RethinkDieting.com, or in, you can book a call at Transform My Future forward slash apply. And it's all that's in the, in the video. So guys, you have a great day. It, this is day number 70. And have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching. And if you haven't noticed, Angie's a great listener. So that's how we stay married. You guys have a great day.